The tight front is probably the most popular defensive front over the last couple years for high school and college football. And in this video, I'm going to talk about my favorite ways to attack it without getting out of a base offense. We'll talk about what the tight front is, why teams play it, three formations that really stress it, and some plays that attack each of those stressors with a little bonus at the end, so make sure you stick around. Now we know there's nothing new in football under the sun, so I'm not going to pretend to know the exact origin of the tight front, but it did come back in vogue in the last couple of years in college. Uh, it's what LSU used to go on their run back in 2019, and the reason is because you can stop explosives in the pass by being able to keep an extra defender over each of these. So we've got three over two to both sides but we're also clogging the interior of the blocking surface. Now, offensively, this is what almost every top 25 team looked like in the late 2010s. We're going to be in 10 personnel spread. And so what defenses wanted to do was they wanted to make it really hard to run in the A and B gaps to the point where when we handed the ball off, it would bounce outside to a player that the offense wasn't blocking. We had five for five in the box and then the will would be that next guy outside and he would oftentimes be able to make this play so from that point of view the defense is really getting the best of both worlds here we're getting too high coverage we're going to make sure that the offense doesn't get any explosives they don't get any cheap yards we're keeping that umbrella over the top of the defense but the defense also didn't have to worry about getting the ball crammed down their throat on the interior of the line because we had the four eyes that were taking away the b gaps then we had a nose that was probably playing backside right here. And then there's only one interior gap that's actually getting filled by a second level player. Now the tight front was also used to help stop RPOs. So if the defense wanted to stay three over two to both sides, this is kind of how a four three would look. And what would happen is the Sam on the backside was gonna be responsible for the B gap. So we abused the slant to death right behind him or a hitch we would read the Sam right on an inside zone. And if he crashed to cover the B gap like he's supposed to, then we just threw the slant right behind him. But what the tight front did now is he is not responsible for an interior gap. So some teams would slow play it and have him responsible for the C gap on a cutback. But what most teams ended up doing is removing him from the run fit entirely. And how the defense knows that he's out of the run fit is because he's on the same side as the running back. So the way defenses would fit it up is again, we've got our ends, the four eyes handle in the B gap. The nose generally would play what they would call a lag technique and play on the backside A gap. Now linebackers would play stack track and fall back, which is essentially kind of like a gap and a half technique for a second level defender. Oftentimes it's called an A to C technique where the jack is kind of responsible for the C gap, but when the ball cuts back, he would fall back to the A gap, and then the mic would be responsible for the A gap, and if the ball cut back, he'd be responsible for the C gap and also be the quarterback player. So that's your five in the box, and then you also have the will coming off the opposite side because he's not on the running back side, so he is not the person that the offenses at that time were reading for an RPO, so he could crash right away as soon as we got that run action. So now there's five blockers, there's six defenders, and the Sam star isn't one of them. Lastly, what this did was it muddied zone reads for quarterbacks. So generally against a four down defense, right, we would just read the C gap defender. Well, against the tight front, there is no C gap defender, at least not at the first level. So here we're blocking five for five, and we don't know if we're handing it off into a loaded box or not because we don't know who to read and the LSU and other tight front teams really preyed on this for a while before offenses figured it out. So now that we know what it is, what can we do to attack it? The first thing we can do is add in a tight end. So remember that this defense was adapted to defeat four wide spread teams. Well, if we get into a non-spread set, then that's going to put this defense a little bit on its heels. Now we can use a tight end out of two by two, but I really like using a tight end out of three by one against the tight front. At least in my area, this is the defense that we see against it a ton. 
So because defenses don't want to leave an open D gap, but they also don't want to change the integrity of the front, we're just gonna get a rolled down safety. We're gonna end up getting some sort of combo coverage in and out with our two over two. We've got the free safety in the middle of the field and we have a regulated defense. We know exactly what we're gonna get. So we have forced the defense to be uncomfortable through this regulation in this formation. We've got two hard edges. Uh, one thing I don't like about facing the tight front is when we don't have that hard edge just because um, it really messes with the offensive line and the blocking surface. So anything we can do to create a hard edge to run to, I'm in favor of that. And we've got two for two on the perimeter and our quarterback player on any read plays is here in the middle of the field. So if you have followed my channel at all for any amount of time, you know that everything for me is going to start with outside zone or wide zone, mid zone, whatever you want to call it. And it is fantastic against the tight front when we add this tight end. So the tight end is going to have the Sam, then the tackle and the guard are going to combo the four eye to the Jack. And with the four eye being inside the tackle, it's almost essentially guaranteed that we can get the C gap any down that we want it whenever we're running an outside zone. The tackle is going to get very thick, get vertical on the defensive end, and then just make sure that that jack doesn't scrape over the top and we're going to be in business. On the back side, the center and the guard will combo the nose up to the mic. And then my preferred way is to arc the backside tackle and read the four eye for a zone read. This would be a midline zone read that we would call this Mingo. So we're gonna end up handling six for six, reading the seventh. This is the quarterback player if we get a pull read and he's probably seeing this backfield action and trying to cut off the zone. So in the box, we have six blockers for six defenders. We're reading the seventh. And as long as we just aren't worse than the team across from us, this should be there all night long. Now we do get a little impatient or eventually they're just going to put somebody down there. They're going to change something just to say the head coach is going to be telling that defensive coordinator, if you let them run outside zone strong one more time, you're walking home. So what are some things we can do off of that? So off of that, what I really like is to run GT counter the other way. And I say off of that because we are going to run it with a bash concept. Now with the angles for the quarterback, I actually like to stack the tackle here against the four eye. We want to hit this really tight because we really want to make this free safety crash and we can hit the alley really clean. So the guard's going to kick the four eye backside tackle wrapping for the mic. The Y is still just going to be hooking the Sam right here. And we are going to read what would be the front side four eye on an outside zone play. So again, if the free safety even hesitates, if he chases this action at all and we get a pull read, the quarterback has a fantastic alley to go score as long as he doesn't get hawked down. And what's great about this combo of outside zone and GT bash is that the more disciplined the defense is, that's actually better for our situation. We really need the Jack to see that pulling guard and scrape over so we don't end up getting a scrape exchange and getting a give read and then the halfback getting smoked in the backfield because of that. Now, if we do get that scrape exchange, it's not the only way that we can run outside zone. If you're not a pistol team, then this may give it away to the defense with a little tendency. We flip the running back, but we can still run our GT counter weak. And if it's not a bash concept, I generally like to block the four eye instead. I'll decide on a week to week basis whether we're going to double the four eye or double the nose back to the backside linebacker, depending on how quickly he scrapes. But we'll just draw up the nose right here. Again, guard, kick, tackle, wrap. Still going to read the defensive end. But what I like here is instead of the Y blocking for the quarterback, we run a Y flat RPO. We can keep him behind the line of scrimmage so that the F and the Z can go block for him. And we can read the Sam for a triple option theory with the GT counter and a quarterback run screen option. Again, the free safety has to be the quarterback player. The reason that this works better if we're getting the scrape exchange is because we aren't getting that bash motion. So the Jack, if he has his eyes in the backfield, it's going to take him to the exact same place that the guard would go. Whereas with the bash motion, the bash action, he might have a free release into the backfield. Last one we will look at for trips right here is power read. 
So we've got outside zone, we've got GT counter, and we have power read. We'll start by running it strong, running inverted power read. Tackle will be blocking down on the end. We would really just be blocking three for three on the front. Backside tackle would have the wheel. Tight end going all the way back to the mic. It's gonna be a really horizontal wall right here, which I'm becoming more and more a fan of the more I study. And then we're gonna read the SAM with the F and the Z blocking for the H sweep and then the quarterback following the guard if he gets that pull. Now, one of the things that I love about power read is that as long as you can run it same side and inverted, you can run the exact same play, strong or weak, no matter which side of the quarterback the running back is on in the gun. So here we're gonna run same side, tackle again, blocking down on the four eye. Backside though, the backside tackle is gonna scoop out the defensive end, so we're gonna get a double team on the nose, wrapping to the mic, and we can read the will on the front side. Same side, halfback would step in and follow the guard. Quarterback would be pulling it. This would be a lot closer to a zone read specific mechanics than the inverted power read, but they're both fantastic plays. Next, we will take a look at West slot. You can also go West zoom and flip the X and the Z here. Either way, we want a twin side and then we want a four man surface. So this is gonna present a lot of issues for the defense right here. This is a super run heavy side. It's gonna really test the defense's will to stay three over two or if they want to rotate to cover three and show a more run heavy defense. Now let's take a look at outside zone again. This time the Y and the F are gonna go to the support player. So I would consider that to be the free safety more than the corner. Um, you know that I don't like blocking corners unless we just have an extra player on the front side, which we don't have here, but everything else is going to work out the same for the offensive line, except here, we're actually going to scoop out the backside the four eye. And this shows another thing that's great about this formation. We have the ability to block up everybody who is in the run fit that we can tell. Normally, the way we account for this is we've got maybe a Z on the front side. We can run a play side glance or something, but we don't have him in this formation here because he's on the back side. So what this allows us to do is, especially early on in the game, we can run something like this to check and see if the defense has actually taken the Sam out of the run fit or not without having to worry about missing a defender on the play side. So compare that to a formation like this, if we were gonna run outside zone, then we can read him, we can still run a double slant concept on the back side, but if he's not in the fit, then that means that the free safety probably is. So we're reading somebody who's not in the run fit because he's out of the run fit, he can give us a run read, and then now we're running right into a loaded box from the defense, which is exactly what we don't wanna do, and that's why we run RPOs. But if we are in a formation like this, then now we can block everybody on the front side except the corner, and if the corner is going to be the one making this tackle on an outside zone run play, then that's probably going to be fine. We're going to live with that all night. But that's going to give us the luxury of reading backside. We can check to see if he's in the run fit or not, especially early in the game. And if he's not, then we can still run into a box where we have everybody that's important to block blocked up. Now, also from this formation and just in general, I do love the combination of outside zone and GT bash. So here, what I would probably do is I'd still probably arc the play side tackle so we get everybody blocked for the quarterback on a pull read. Gonna get the double on the nose. We'll kick the four eye and wrap to the mic. And then on the play side, we've got the fullback and the tight end. They would just basically pretend like it's outside zone. I would let them go to the corner here because remember the free safety has to be the quarterback player we would read the four eye. So I would let the tight end and fullback go to the corner here. Again, if the quarterback pulls the ball, then we don't care what the free safety does, especially if he's chasing the running back because there's not gonna be anybody to make this tackle. But also if the running back gets this ball, then we block the corner, we can take a more outside path and give that free safety a lot longer to travel before he can actually make the play. Last one from this formation, we will do just same side GH counter or GF counter. Since it's not bash, I'm probably gonna choose to block down on the end there. Again, blocking back to the backside linebacker. Backside tackle scooping out the end. Basically, we're just gonna get a 
double wrap. Tight end would have the will. Same side, running back is going to get the ball and follow his blockers around the edge. And because we're in this overloaded formation here, we're going to get basically everybody blocked up. The free safety is going to be the only one who can make this play. And that's if the running back can't just get outside quick enough. All right, last formation we will take a look at is hard. And what we're forcing the defense to do here is we've got at least one hard edge. We've only got a single receiver out here to the fullback side. So that wheel is going to be down. And because of that, it's going to mess with our combos enough to where we can really run our wide zone insert. So our play side tackle and play side guard are going to fan out. Fullback is going to isolate the play side inside linebacker. And then our combos are going to shake out like regular from there. Got to be able to get the backside end scooped out. That's going to be kind of a key component for all these. But we can run our outside zone. Going to end up cutting right behind the fullback right here. And this is where that play side glance can come into play behind that free safety. Now we've talked so far, we've done different variations of wide zone and counter and power read. Haven't gotten much inside zone yet, but that's one that we can do here again. We're going to get that fan out on the front side with inside zone. I would rather isolate the backside inside linebacker because with inside zone, we're expecting the ball to cut back. We can arc the backside tackle and block three for three on the backside reading the defensive end now this can be problematic the defensive ends rules generally are going to be to get hands on the tackle and eyes on the guard but if he's getting hands on the tackle and the tackle is expanding he's going to be widening which means it's a give read and a give read on inside zone right here means it's probably coming back to the backside b gap so he can play outside on the tackle and maybe fold back in to make this play but if we're going to get a defensive end that's going to just run up the field then this is going to be a perfectly fine play. Last one we'll take a look at here is going to be power read weak. And I really like this because we get everybody on the play side blocked. So we're going to be handling the front here. We would read the will and wrap to the jack. So what the fullback is going to do here is he's actually going to be a lead blocker for the sweep. So the H is going to run the sweep, quarterback running the power, the X is just going to block the corner if he's pressed, probably just going to end up running him off instead. But we're going to get that lead blocker on the free safety. Everybody in the front is blocked. And essentially, as long as the quarterback makes the right read, this should be an explosive play. Now, I said at the beginning of the video that I had a bonus for you. Uh, we're going to go over another formation here. It's just another two back formation. We're going to have the fullback and the tight end on the same side. And this is going to let us do some really fun stuff against the tight front. Now what this does for the defense is we've got our two hard edges with the Sam and the Will playing in those outside gaps. And then we also have the possibility of both safeties getting involved in the run fit. But out of this formation, we can run what has really become maybe my favorite run play over the course of this past season. And that is going to be Zorro Cat. So it's outside zone, same one we've been running the entire video. Since it's too high, I would have the backside tackle just cut off the defensive end. We're going to hand it off. So what Zorro is, is it's a fullback and tight end combination on the Sam. The tight end has the outside half of the combination. The fullback has the inside half. It's going to allow the tight end to get really wide and really stretch the front side of this play out. And that's why I really like it with this open C gap right here, especially against the four eye, because we should get that walled off. Now that's Zorro. The cat part of it is instead of going to the strong safety, they're going to take this combination out to the corner. So this is going to create a huge stretch on the front side. The Z is going to go crack the safety and there's going to be a gigantic alley right here for the halfback to hit. The next way that I would run outside zone, we can run wham. So we would be blocking up the front side of the play everything except the backside tackle the same we're going to arc him backside to the will then the fullback is going to come wham the defensive end and we're going to run outside zone from there power read is still a fantastic option either way we're going to get another variation where the center's going all the way back guard wrapping for the mic backside tackle would still have the will still going to get the fullback leading on the strong safety for the sweep reading the sam Again, another great variation of power read right here. Now, another great opportunity here to show the versatility of power read. We're going to create load option 
with power read right here. So we're gonna run it the same side. The will is going to be our read key. Blocking down on the four eye, some combination of our center guard and tackle for the defensive end, the nose and the mic. Guard wrapping for the jack. Backside tackle is gonna scoop out the defensive end and Y is gonna block the same out. So what we'll do here is while we have our backfield action going on, the fullback is going to lead around for the quarterback on the pull read. So while the quarterback is making his read, the fullback is going to fake sift the backside defensive end. He's gonna bluff him, get around him and block the free safety. X is again probably just running off the corner. So if the quarterback gets a pull read, he's got a lead blocker in the fullback off the load option action. And then the running back, if we get a give read, is running the power. Also really like same side GF counter here. This is an option where I would want to probably uh, stack the play side tackle block out on the wheel and hit this thing really tight with the same side action. No, what we could also add here is an X glance, reading that play side free safety. We've got seven for seven in the box. He's the eighth one that we can't block. If he's gonna join the party, then we can throw the glance right behind him. Then lastly, we'll talk about GT counter. We can run it both ways here really like running it strong and we can run counter f sift so with our gt counter we'd be blocking back on everybody on the front guard kick the sam tackle wrap for the mic and then the fullback is going to come across and pick up any trash from the back side with that will with our halfback the one running the counter and since we have everybody blocked up in the box we can run the glance behind that play side safety. Now, if you enjoyed this video and talking about how to attack different defenses, be sure to subscribe to the channel because it's one of the things we're gonna be talking about all summer long. One of the coverages that often gets paired with the tight front is quarters coverage. And if you click on the screen and watch this next video, I'll tell you all my thoughts on attacking it.